What's up YouTube? Thanks for tuning back in Chase Games here and today's video is what everybody wants to see. It's a t -t 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 tier list. Elaine, did that come out? Yeah, like 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 a knockoff radio DJ, right? Anyway, today tier list. Let's go at it. I did one of these a long time ago and there's been quite a few new units since then. And honestly, this is part of a new player thing. I'm aiming towards new players right now for the sixth month because uh, they're going to need the most help. Um, so let's go over it. My tiers are gotta have it. These are things that you should uh, honestly look for in a reroll, be really happy to get. Now, honestly, the only thing that you're really aiming for in a reroll is a Stark right now. But, uh,. Anything that I put up here is a huge bonus enough to sway you. Okay. Uh, although it's not really a scenario. I mean, you're either going for a Stark on your reroll, or you're going for the other banner, the six-month banner. And it should be the Stark banner, so it doesn't really matter too much. But hey, maybe you're just going for your favorite character. Next one, Orb That Shit Fool. Um, this is just stuff that is so good that you should orb it, or at least, like... Maybe I'll try to order them, like, what you should prioritize first. Not everyone's a day one player like me. Obviously, I'm making this for new players as well as experience on this one. Um, but exper more experienced players mostly know this stuff. Um, but I will try to order it so that, you know, if you've got, like, six orbs or something, you can try to figure out what you think is more important. But it really depends on your play style, what you're doing. Do you care about Arena? Do you care more about PvE? Do you like certain characters more? There you go. Um, all right, that can be pretty good, okay? These are things that are useful. You know, if you've got everything up here orbed, maybe you're starting to think about this. Um, you know, these are not things that are going to sway you in a reroll, really. Um, but uh, neat. These are units that are fine. These are things like, uh, I don't know, um, like half of the general S pool. Um, you know, uh, all right. I heard that's useful in some event one time. These are, <laughs> these are the bad units, uh, that have some use. Okay. There are units that have some, some use, uh, like kind of on, honestly, uh, well, in a way you could say that, uh, that's where hell gladiator is. If you're not going for a poison strat, he's pretty bad. Um, Otherwise, in reality, he's up here because Poison Strat is huge uh, in this game. At least right now. I don't think they fixed it. Orochi event, it's like they kind of tried to fix it because he couldn't be poisoned for 10 rounds, basically. But the best strategy is just to wait 10, 10 rounds so that you can poison him. So, um, yeah, that's where he'll go. We're going to leave him here because other than his ability to poison, he's not any good. Um, but it is something that you really want in your account. But not something you're going to aim for. Okay. Uh, and then the last rank is, seriously, I couldn't pull anything else. That is where... Well, for a lot of people, it's King She Slime. In reality, he was useful in an event one time. He has a... What is it? Sh Headstrong or something like that. Uh, that blows everything back two squares. That can actually be amazingly, amazingly useful uh, sometimes. Uh, what is, geez, what what's a really bad one here? Right now, right now, it's seriously I couldn't pull anything else. It's Metal Dragon. This is the one S tier, S rank that I don't have, and right now, I don't mind that. Uh, but he is uh, not any good right now. Uh, when he uh, when he gets his Bloom Talent system, he will be pretty darn good. Okay, so let's just start... Uh, there's a lot of repeats on here. Alright, so, this is at the top of the list. A star. This is what you're re-rolling for, okay? He's amazing. I don't even have him up yet. Apparently, everybody's telling me he's amazingly strong. So, yeah, you can go <laughs> say what you want. I have not used him yet other than leveling him. I was able to pull him today. Watch the pull video, boys. I always say boys because I think there are two girls that play this game, and I mean that literally. Uh, I did have one surprise me in my chat the other day, or in my comments. I can't remember. Um, anywho, 
This is what you should be re-rolling for right now. Super strong. Apparently is going to be the best unit in the game until Nocturnus comes out. The one year anniversary unit. Surprise. The one year anniversary unit is stronger. But this guy is awesome. Okay. Uh, let's just move along. Juliante. You know what? When she came out, was not very big on her. You should orb that shit, fool. Okay. Um, first of all, all right, so she gets outshadowed by Sorrow as a Bang-type user, but first of all, you can have more than one. You can have one more than one Bang-type user. Uh, second, she has uh, her... Whatever that move is called, where she buffs everyone around her, uh, she gives everyone around her an attack buff. That is amazingly useful. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes you would rather have something like Oomph from Bianca, a double attack boost. Um, but if you've got two or three melee cast, uh, users in your party, that is amazing. Okay, be uh, be aware that it is based around her. I forgot that. It's not like a buff where you aim it. It is Juliante herself and the all the units uh, directly adjacent to her. All right. Uh, and then she does some darn good damage. Also, she is 50 points. Okay? She only costs 50 points. That's a huge deal in Arena. All right. There are not a whole lot of amazing 50-point units right now. All right. Let's keep going along. Dragon Lord. Okay, this one is a little. I love mine. Okay, if you care about arena for, or, sorry, if you care about PVE first and foremost, you don't care too much about arena. He's orb that shit fool. If you care about arena, honestly, I don't think he's a good arena unit. Um, he's uh he's that can be pretty good. Single target, right now, single target. Don't let anybody tell you that he doesn't do as good as damage as so-and-so. Now, I haven't compared him to a Stark, but before, for the longest time, it was him or Zoma. Zoma's the big bad caster on the block. If you're talking about single target damage, Dragon Lord buries Zoma, okay? When you're using Hellfire Blast and all four hits are brilliant and they hit... The one target, like there's nothing else around him, which is not unfeasible at all, especially in a boss fight. Okay. I had him doing 1,400 damage, I think at level 100 with the only, with the ability only at plus 6. That was one awakening. Okay. Dragon Lord is incredibly strong. Okay. Unfortunately, he has two movement, and that Hellfire Blast is only range 2. Um, and it can hit other things. It works like multi-fists. Uh, or Nera's uh, bang type spell. Um, so it doesn't always hit the one target, but as long as there's nothing next to him, yes, it's going to hit that one target. It's going to do amazing damage. I'm going to leave him down here because as much as I love him, he's the Dragon Lord. He does amazing single target damage. If you're looking at Arena 2, okay, there's nothing. Also, I haven't, we haven't had a Frizz Weakness boss in a, lot, in a while, it feels like. Well, one that could be hit by spell attacks, so it's just not feeling as good. All right. Now, the Big Daddy, Dragon Lord True Form, amazing, okay? Um, I'm going to put it like that. Uh, Dragon Lord True Form, he's he's amazing, okay? Six, he's 65 points for Arena, but he's got Fire Breath. Hits everything for big Frizz damage, okay? And then he's got his Tail Swing to do some decent non-elemental damage. Mine, I only use for Fire Breath because I don't have any Awakenings in him. Keep in mind, uh, everybody tells me, no, no, it's about his Tail Swing. He's amazing. He has great attack. If you don't have any Awakening dupes for Dragon Lord, orbing him, okay? You can still orb him because his Fire Breath will do exactly the same damage, okay? At Zero Awakening, as Full Awakening. His Awakening perk is for Dragon Swing, okay? Also, Strength doesn't affect um, Fire Damage, okay? It's just level. So if you're using him for his Fire Breath, it's actually just called Fire, but I have to call it Fire Breath. Um, then, um, yeah, Zero Awakening is, it's all about level on that ability, okay? It's breath. Helbert Saurus, okay? Orb that shit, okay? He's very strong. Mine, I'm a little slow on because I went for, uh, armor and arena first, and I just don't care about arena so much, even though I prioritize everything by how well they go in arena. But, uh, this is a great unit, and you can get him fully awakened for free, Okay, and he is one of the very few Sys type users in this game. All right, so eventually you will get him max awakened for free. Most likely, you can very easily get him awakened too. 
Um, and then even three is pretty easy. Four is a little bit more. I think the last copy takes like four or five uh, dupes, but um, you know, it's 800 arena coins a piece. You get it eventually. It takes a while. All right, let's go. Keep going on the list. Nera, or that? Yeah. Um, I think I'd put her before Juliante. Uh, before these guys, it depends on whether you're a PVE or arena. If you care more about a PVE, put her first. Um, but uh, I don't know about her in arena. She's 65 points. That's a lot of points. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. Guys, not only is she a caster, her wisdom is a little bit low. Okay, it's a little bit low. But she has Kaswoosh. Okay, it gets no bonuses from her uh, weapon or her awakening perks. But it can put things to sleep. So if you want her for straight damage, White King is significantly stronger. Okay, especially since you're going to have more awakening copies of him. Unless you went full on on the Bride's Banners, in which case you're either a whale or... Or, you're an idiot and you didn't listen to me. You were not supposed to spend your gems on the waifus. Unless you're a whale. Okay. Anywho. Um, White, White King is going to do more damage with her than his, uh, with his Kuswoosh. But, it has a very rare chance to put things to sleep. Now, in my experience, if they are weak to sleep, uh, it has a pretty good chance of putting them to sleep. So, on certain maps, that ability is going to be amazing. Um... Now, the way I went about, on about uh, Dragon Lord's Hellfire, uh, Hellfire Blast, she has the same thing, exactly works exactly the same with uh, the Bang element, and that's where her perks, uh, Awakening perks go to. Um, and I believe... Her, no, I think her weapon boosts her coup de grace, which you should not do. Have her weapon just boost uh, general uh, Bang spells. Um, but anyway, besides being a damn good double element caster, okay, with high single target and AoE damage, uh, with a sleep possible sleep effect, she also has the single best, uh, sing sorry, she has the by far the best single target heal in the game, okay? I don't know if it heals more than multi-heal, I actually haven't maxed out either of them, apparently, uh, her, uh, her, the wisdom cap on her mid heal, even though it is a B rank ability, is actually pretty high. So I don't know what its cap is. Um, I saw a picture that said it's well over 300. I have trouble believing it. Um, but anyway, she's got an amazing mid heal uh, spell. Or sorry, more heal spell. It's single target, and uh, it's the most effective, uh, efficient single target heal in the game. So she's got all that going for. Her. Two elements and a single target heal. She's amazing. And she's got MP regen um, automatically, not through Awakening, uh, that makes her good. So even without an Awakening, she doesn't lose anything. She just gets spell tricks with an Awakening, which makes her spells stronger and cheaper. Um, but it means that she's, you know, none of the, her mechanics are changing. So if you have her at zero Awakening, she's still good. Uh, Deborah, I'm going to put Deborah at that can be pretty good. You know, she's definitely better than a lot of things. Uh, I mean, this guy's way at the bottom of this list. Um, but, I mean, honestly, if you have everything up here orb, she's great to orb. Um, she is one of the very few Sizz casters, uh, Sizz users in the game. But, uh, you know, she's, uh, I don't know, everything has two weaknesses. I could be very down about her. Um, I just, I don't know, I don't want to throw everything up here. Um, she's very orbable. She's very good. Um, me, I just didn't see it. I know there are some very smart players who actually picked her as their favorite bride. But, and then, uh, let's go down here. Let's grab Bianca. I'm actually throwing Bianca behind Juliante up here. She has oomph. Now, I pointed out, sometimes you're going to want oomph over, uh, Juliante's attack boost. Sometimes it's better to attack, uh, boost something's attack twice Rather than everything's once. Um, but she's there. She's one of the very few zap uh, uh, move users in this game. Her awakening gives her... Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. She automatically gets a counterattack. I don't really know how strong that is. Mine's only level 80. Um, I will test her out more in the future. But she's a zap user. She has an attack buff move. Um, and she has a coup de grace that can do some good damage to uh, Dark Lord type enemies. 
All right, Great Dragon. Right now, I'll put it down here. Okay, I don't think it's very useful. Uh, you could argue that it belongs up here. Okay, it's not good at it's not terribly bad at anything. It's not good at anything. Um, after it gets its bloom, okay, it gets a cone uh, AOE breath attack. It's gonna be up here with these guys, okay? Right now, though, honestly, I think it's I think it's bottom. I think it's I think it's just above Metal Dragon, and that's about it. Uh, all right, Hybrid. You know what? Same story, man. Uh, you know, sorry, Prism Peacock. Prism Peacock's weird because uh, I pulled them going through story early on on I think like an old on an old account and he seems really great okay and then you like get to the I don't know the end game and he's really he's shit um once again he will get a bloom system in a few months and he probably still only gets to about here um I can't remember everything they improve on him but he gets a new move that is it's like a big AoE pattern around him it's in like it's in like a diamond uh shape two uh two tiles around him i believe but right now he's he's down here honestly he's probably lower than metal dragon um squidzilla probably here uh before sorrow he was the only bang uh a type the only bang physical i believe um but and he had the 10 percent physical potency leader skill or yeah However, it was uh, ten, plus ten percent physical power, uh, power leader skill. Um, he's right here now. After his bloom, this is one of the the third of four S ranks, general pool S ranks that gets a talent bloom. Okay, he will be up here. Okay, he's gonna be amazing. He's gonna get more movement. He's gonna get a better move. Um, but right now, I think he's down here just for his leader skill and. Um, you know, he just, he has no range. He's movement two, and he's got a good blast attack, uh, bang type attack, but I mean, it's, it's range one, you know, it doesn't have any AOE on it, um, it's just, it's just one big bang hit, uh, but he's not gonna hit anything, you know, he moves two, so he's just kind of useless. Um, okay, they put Metal Dragon in again. Sorrow, okay, Sorrow's up here, man, okay. He is in the six-month anniversary banner. I think it seems to still be better off going for uh, a Stark. Also, re-rolling for Sorrow. He's a pretty low chance to pull. Um, you know, everything is a low chance to pull. It's just that, like, you know, it's the same 3% uh, summon rate for S-Ranks in the six-month banner. But, you know, there's, th like, 30 units in it. So, it's really hard to pull him. I would not suggest re-rolling for... Uh, Sorrow, but if you get him as a new player and you got your Stark on your reroll, dude, you are awesome and you're fucking set. Okay, Zoma, oh my god, same thing, dude. If you get a Stark and either of these guys, this is like the big boy caster. Okay, I didn't understand the hype when he came out because, all right, he had uh Glacial Doom, all right, it's just like Kaswish. All right, cool. Right. Um, it must be... My White King actually has a significantly higher wisdom than my Zoma. So, uh, Glacial Doom must just have a higher damage than Kaswoosh. Um, because he does great damage with his Glacial Doom. The other thing that I underrated, I did not think it was going to be a big deal, uh, his Psy Cannon. Um, it's tight neutral uh, spell damage. That's actually pretty awesome, okay? Because obviously it's ranged, it's range three, and it's good against everything unless they have like a magic barrier. It's good against anything, so it's never going to hit for brilliant damage, but it's always going to do like you know, seven or eight hundred damage. You know, it's awesome. Elena, um, I honestly think that she's neat tier because she is a hero. If we're talking about arena, yeah, neat tier. PVE, that can be pretty good. I'm going to keep her at neat. Guys, don't get excited for her. Don't get overly excited about hero units, okay? Um, the boss units are way better. Um, 
And don't get uh, impressed by their coup de gras moves. First of all, not a lot of them are not as strong as they look. Then again, I haven't really leveled mine up as well as I should. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but um, like her coup de gras move doesn't come in till round th uh, three. Okay, in arena, you don't need a coup de gras in round three. You need it on round one and two. Um, turn three is cleanup. So no, coup de gras is useless there. Um, also in arena, she is just too fragile. Okay, she is really only working with a cover tank or very quick things where she can take one hit maybe if she's not weak to it. That's it. She can take one hit. If she's resistant, a couple. But that's about it. Um, Archdemon. I'm just going to put him at neat. Um, if you don't have Baramos, he's probably he could be up here, okay? Uh, it's, it's him and Baramos as typecasters. I honestly haven't given mine a shot. Maybe he's pretty strong. Thing is, is his, uh, his spell, uh, has the boom AOE pattern. Uh, but, uh, it's only range two. So the only way he's, uh, hitting something three, uh, squares away is if something else is in front of it. Uh, and again, of course, he's only moved two. So I don't know how his wisdom is, um, but uh, he's just he's just not super strong. Uh, his uh, don't and also don't get excited about his uh, what glacier ability. He also does uh, martial ice type moderate martial ice dam crack damage rather. Uh, that's worthless. It's not doing any real damage no matter what you do to it. Baramos, okay, um, that can be pretty good for sure. Yeah. He's a bank type caster, and he's also super strong. Okay, people hate him because he came out in JP right before Zoma in Global, like two weeks after. He got overpowered. Yes, Zoma is much better. Um, but if you need a caster and your enemy has a bang weakness, he's a shit ton better. Like, yeah, Baramos is great. Okay, uh, that meme is mostly over on Global, but that being said, uh, if you're in PvE, he's very slow. Uh, if you're in Arena, okay, he's 65 points, so you're only bringing him if you've got a couple of um, uh, Bang-type weakness units, but um, in Arena, his slowness is actually amazing. So uh, don't disparage him for being slow, but in PvE, if that is a factor, uh, it's good. All right, I'm going to spend a second here, Night Clover. I think that he can be pretty good. And I'm going to get some shit for this. People are going to tell me I'm stupid. I haven't tested him too much yet, okay? I have not cared about Arena this week, and I just did this this week, okay? I double orge my Night Clubber, because mine is also fully awakened. Uh, let me tell you this, okay? His attack never gets very good. I think it's a little bit over 400. Max awakened, level 110, with the Flail of Destruction, okay? Um... Because he has Ultra Stomp, okay? It's uh, it's a decent potency physical type neutral attack. Um, but with the uh, one of the S-rank armors on, either the shield or uh, the liquid metal slime armor is a tiny bit better in terms of defense at least. He has 700 defense, dude. If you're going against a team with only physical users, he's not taking damage. He's not, he's not going to take damage. Yeah, he'll take, he'll take some. But like, in reality, he's fine. 700 defense, dude. Okay. It's amazing. All right. He's not, he's not going to get taken down by physical units. Okay. And he's still got like 900 HP in that scenario too. So, um, if you are using Helbert Saurus and Dragon, uh, sorry, uh, Dragon Lord Trueform, this guy going right along with him. I'm not gonna say he's good for every arena match, but if you've got if you've got 50 points left over, none of your 50 point S S rank units are really, you know, they're the wrong type or, you know, maybe they're a little weak. Like I ordered my hybrid, maybe I probably shouldn't have. Um, this guy, he's gonna come in and he's gonna do three, four hundred. Well, probably he's gonna do around 300 damage to two, three, four units. That's damn good in arena for 50 points. He's gonna finish off what you started with fire and volcanic breath all right so you'll hear more from me about him soon also he his leader skill is plus 20 percent uh beast 
unit, uh, physical potency, physical power, however it is. Um, beast, beast physical is good, okay? It's going to boost your Hellion. Uh, there are some good lower C and D rank beast units if you have to bring a C or a D rank unit. Um, and then Juliante is a beast unit. If you're bringing Juliante, that gives even more incentive for Night Clubber. So depends on the week, depends on the opponent, depends on um, a couple of things. But uh, Night Clubber can actually be pretty good in Arena. All right, this guy, I'm going to put him at neat. Okay, still, okay, apparently, uh, I forget, Juliante has a characteristic that improves her agility for the first, what, turn or two of battle? I can't remember. Maybe it's an occasionally thing. I can't remember. But just, like, just stat-wise, without any characteristics or perks or anything, he is the fastest unit in the game. And I don't mean just global. I mean, like, in Japan, too. Out of all, like, their, well, like, 50 S ranks they have, he's the fastest. Okay? This guy is super fast. He's going to do good damage with his Scorch. Um, but, uh, you know, he's not going to finish anything off other than, like, weak minions and stuff like that. And he is a glass cannon, uh, but glass cannon generally denotes a, uh, a higher uh, damage output, and he's not really hitting that, so uh, he's more of a utility character. Um, Sweet Breath does have an enhanced effect on him with his uh, Breath Tricks uh, level 1 Awakening uh, perk, so there's that. If you need to put something to sleep, put the Sweet Breath scroll on him, bring him, and then he's still going to do some damn good damage. Okay pretty good unit, um, but pr relatively low priority for orbs. Um, this guy, I don't know whether to put him in the second or the, the bottom tier. Okay, this guy should be in the general pool. Okay, he, I believe he was the first banner in JP, and he was already outdated then. This guy sucks. Okay, he probably belongs up here. I don't have him, I haven't used him, and I also know that nobody's talking about him. Okay, he's not good. Why they put him... Why he's not just in the general pool already. It took him a year to do it in JP, okay? It's stupid. Uh, this guy, probably up here. All right, I think he's slow. He probably, I think he has really high HP. I don't know about his defense. He's got a, he's probably got a, I haven't leveled mine. He's like level 90, but I, mine is also great. Uh, sorry, fully awakened, so maybe I need to look into him more. I imagine that he probably does some decent typeless physical damage. So he's probably right there. Maybe he's up here. I don't know yet. Um, but uh, he's definitely not the worst. He's probably fine to use leveling through story and stuff. But um, other than that, I don't think he's... I know that there was one... Um, Nibs said he really liked his great troll. Um, but I'm not too sure. Uh, Dragwar, I'm going to put up here. Alright, I'm going to put it like this. Uh, Dragwar, uh, first of all, he's 50 points, so in Arena that makes him a lot better. The thing is that you already have White King, and White King should be uh, up there. You know, where is White King? Let's jump ahead. White King is up here. Okay. He's up here. Orb White, Fink, Orb White King. Okay, he's amazing. He's a, a really strong swish uh, user. He has a relevant leader skill. Okay, um, and he's super easy to get. Like, yeah, maybe you don't get him at first because you've got some bad luck, but he's in the general S rank pool. You're gonna max him out. You're maybe not max. You're gonna get awakening levels on him pretty fast, a lot faster than any banner unit. Um, anyway, so Dragwar is also a uh, whoosh type unit so you know when when orbs are as sparse as they are in this game i can't see awakening mine especially if he's at zero awakening but if you have an awakening copy in him or two he's probably in a high he's probably worth orbing um i think i might put it like this um but yeah he's he's a very good unit also a beast type, if you want to bring Night Clubber, um, he will get stronger. He's got a, an AoE martial dam, uh, attack that uh, inflicts a status condition. I can't remember which one. So he's pretty good. All right, lots of repeats on this one. Kirill, um, neat. Okay, that's it, neat. Um, he does have multi-heal, 
Okay. Also, if you need to boost attack and spell resistance at the same time, that is, at least right now, um, I don't know if anything has got it else yet in Japan, a unique uh, move to boost attack and spell resistance by one stage each at a time. And then multi-heal. Uh, he has the ability to attack for some decent uh, type neutral damage, but um, hybrid characters are not very well rewarded in this game. You know, being decent at two things, generally not what you want. You want something to be really good at whatever it does. Um, okay, Killing Machine. Um, I'm not too high on this unit. I think it can be good. Uh, it is only 50 points as well. Um, so certain arena teams, if you're, if you really need more physical damage, if you're lacking Zoma as well, you can put him up a tier or two. Um, you gotta have him at, at, at least one awakening to get his plus one movement too, but I don't know. I didn't really use mine, so maybe I'm too low on him because I haven't used him, but I think, I think Killing Machine is a little bit dated right now. Uh, I think he's due for an amazing bloom talent though, so you got that. Uh, did I do Sly and Heart yet? Uh, I'm going to put Sly and Heart up here. That can be pretty good. Um, again, it's another whoosh unit. So, you know, if you're looking... If you want a second one, because you already have White King, um, you know, it's it's you pick Dragwar or Sly and Heart. And I'm going to say that Dragwar is probably better. Um, but, like, if you have more... Co if you're picking one right now, if you're in that situation and it's Dragwar... Or Sly and Heart. Literally just go with the one with more Awakenings on it. Uh, he also has a decent strength uh, zap move too. Which is, again, not super common zap move. So that gives him a little bit more. Um, so there you are. Uh, mine's Awakening too. I should orb him. I don't know. I it, It's a long time till I'll be able to orb him most likely. Alright. And uh, let's see... Uh, Queen Slime. I'm going to put her in neat. Apparently in Arena, she is very strong, okay? If you got a few Awakening copies of her, like through the six month, think about orbing her. Um, but uh, I'm not crazy about her. She was very useful in the Pyramid EX event because she can pull units. She does have some very unique uh, utility. Uh, but, um... Yeah, she's not she's not super strong. She's not going to help you out too much in ninety five percent of her uh, PVE. Um, but arena very useful sometimes. All right, what do we have? Royal reptile. Uh, I'm going to put him up here. Okay, it's a general pool unit. Uh, gets up to movement three. Now it does have it has no AOE. It has no reach. Okay, but it is a zap type ability, uh, and he resists crack. Zoma, big deal in Arena. So if you're going against Zoma, uh, Royal Reptile is basically a counter to him. Okay, it can be very, very helpful. Um, that being said, uh, it's probably probably closer to... It's probably a bit lower. Okay. Um, I He's definitely not useful at Zero Awakening. And his damage is not so high that he's just one-shotting everything necessarily in Arena. So you may need him at uh, Awakening level 3 or 4... Um, before he's really able to one-shot uh, tougher things. If you're going against whales in Arena, um, well, you shouldn't be. You don't. You generally aren't stuck picking whales. You can usually pick something that only has one or two awakenings, but his, uh, his zap-type uh, strike uh, generally does just enough to put things down, so when they're fully awakened, he's probably not going to take them down. But he's a darn good unit. Um... But he's losing he's lo he's losing power when better zap units come out. But he's probably going to get a bloom system sometime soon. So definitely not a bad idea to orb. Um, Emperor slime. I'm going to put him neat. I'm going to put him. I mean, in PVE, uh, Carol's probably better. The only thing is is uh, Emperor slime has kabuff instead of his type neutral attack. Um, and instead of boosting spell resistance, he boosts attack and defense. Uh, sometimes that's going to be better. Sometimes it's going to be irrelevant. But uh, he uh, he does have that boosting move. Um, I think his multi heal might have might be stronger. I don't know if Kirill's awakening perks uh, boost his uh, 
uh, healing effect, uh, Emperor Slime. I don't know how their wisdom compares, but uh, he also gets sporadic MP regen. I don't know what Kirill gets. I don't care about Kirill. So I'm going to guess that Emperor Slime's probably a better healer, but he also has super low HP. So I'm sure Kirill can take a couple more hits than Emperor Slime can. I'll guarantee it. Um, Emperor Slime probably doesn't need to be orbed. I orbed mine once. And I think it made him a lot better, and I'm happy with it. I don't think I need to orb him twice. Um, so I'm just going to leave him there at neat. PvE only unit. I don't think you're ever going to want to use him in Arena. Uh, okay, let's see. Is that all I've got? Was that everything? That's uh, 18, 22, 25, 28, 30. That's 31 unit. I think that's everything. I think that's everything that we got. So, um, I knew this was going to be a long video. I'm actually surprised it's not a, uh, longer, 36 minutes right now. So, hopefully this helped somebody. Please feel free to go in the comments and tell me how stupid I am. Okay? Um, or uh, just like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Channel is still growing, so really trying to hit a 1,000. It's going to help me make better quality content for you guys. And make it more fun for me. The more fun for me this is, the more videos you guys get. So, please, like, subscribe, and if you comment, I will respond most likely, unless you're really annoying. Have a good night, guys, and good luck in the sixth month.